It is going to be a historic and dramatic day in Washington, D.C., with the future of the U.S. Supreme Court hanging in the balance. Here to help me discuss it, NBC's Jacob Soboroff, the co-host of PBS's In Principle, Amy Holmes, and NBC News legal analyst Dan Goldman. Welcome to you all. Good morning. Hi, morning. Weeks of accusations and denials have brought us to this moment. In just a little while, we will hear from Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and from one of his accusers, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. We know that Dr. Ford will tell senators that she does not want to be there. She will say that she is terrified, but that she feels it's her civic duty to speak out. It's high stakes. And I can't help but wonder what Judge Kavanaugh, who's had, you know, 20 plus years of distinguished service to the country on the bench and otherwise, what he's feeling this morning and what Dr. Ford, you know, a private citizen a couple of weeks ago, working as a psychology uh, professor, what she's feeling about to go before those senators and this this uh, sex crimes prosecutor who will be doing a lot of the questioning for the Republicans, right? Well, I can tell you how I'm feeling. I'm feeling like hyper and we were talking about an anxious mm -hmm. that millions of people are going to be watching, uh, people who are otherwise private citizens, they don't go on television for a living, to talk about very personal, intimate, difficult, painful things for both Judge Kavanaugh and Dr. That's Ford. Right. Not just that, the future of America. I swear to God, I woke up, I'm a, I was a bad student, and I felt like this morning waking up uh, like I did when I wouldn't prepare for a test going into school, you know? <laughs> and that's essentially what the Senate Judiciary Committee is doing. There's been no FBI investigation. We're going to see these two witnesses. Um, they're going to make a decision that literally will last a lifetime after this. And nobody's decided to say, you know what, let's stop, let's pause. No, but there's been an minute. investigation, Jacob. There's been a, there hasn't been an FBI investigation, but there's been an investigation. The Senate investigators have been investigating these claims since they were made. That and is not the same thing. But, there's even but, they, but to suggest course. that there hasn't been an investigation is false. Well, they haven't has spoken been. to Mark Judge. The, the, they have spoken to anybody who will speak to them. And Mark, well, Judge, Mark, Judge, has issued a state, Mark Judge has issued a statement denying that this happened and saying he doesn't want anything to do with these but proceedings. But this is the difference, why, and this is why an FBI investigation is so important, is the FBI is not there to draw any conclusions about whether one person says the right thing or the other. They are there to talk to all of the relevant people, the ones who were in the room like Mark Judge and others Alleged. who may... Right. Others who may be corroborating witnesses. And then they're to deliver that. And then the committee can do what they want. A Senate committee investigation run by the majority Republicans is the, just the Democrats not have had the, the opportunity same. to participate in those. And for the first but half they, of it, they're not they equipped declined. to and, do this. And in point of fact, the uh, Democrats this, are not equipped. They don't have in, in point of fact, they could ask questions on these phone calls, which right. they have refused to do. And in point of fact, the Senate Judiciary Committee, they have an investigative, bipartisan investigative team that investigates judicial nominations all the time uh, for the federal bench. But we have a, even a new no, twist. No, they refer so to the FBI. Let me, hold on. There might be, this is very strange that came out last night, two men have stepped forward and said that they might be the men to whom Dr. Ford is referring. Mm -hmm. I mean, this story just gets more and more complicated and more and more strange. Yeah, there are now two, two different men have come forward to say, I believe I may have been the one... But let's, that Dr. Can I just Ford, put that and she says, I absolutely have, have not uh, made a case of mistaken identity. I'm very sure it was Brett Kavanaugh. But let's put that in perspective. You have two anonymous men coming forward and saying, volunteering, I committed a crime, and the statute of limitations has not run on that crime. I can be prosecuted for this, mm -hmm. but I'm doing this out of the good of the country. I'm otherwise a private citizen who would have no public exposure. And we're to believe that, oh, I just want to come forward and admit to an attempted rape mm -hmm. in order to, you know, because I... Some people would say that that raises smells. their credibility. I, I said this the other day, and I really mean it. I think that this is the reason that people don't trust Washington. This is the, pe the reason people don't go out... To vote, we're talk Republicans and Democrats cannot even agree on how to handle not one, not two, not three, but four alleged assaults, no. sexual assaults at this point, and how there to investigate There are not four those. alleged assaults. Two. Let's say it's no, one. No, there let's aren't. Let's walk two. through it. No, because this is what happens when when you're you're in this position for Judge Kavanaugh. Everybody just tries to lump them together and say four or five accusers accusing of sexual assault. Not true. Irrespective of the number. No, it matters. It mat the facts yeah. matter. Okay, Dr. So Christine, no, no, let me say. Yeah. Dr. Christine Blasey Ford accuses him of an attempted sexual assault on her, sure. a sexual assault and attempted rape. Uh, there are no corroborating witnesses to that event. The only other person she puts in the room, Mark Judge, a friend of his, which I think speaks to her credibility, because she put his friend in the room, not her friend. Okay, so so far she's looking. I mean, that, that to me is the indica indicator of somebody who's trying to tell what she honestly believes. But anyway, he denies it. 
Mark Judge denies it. Brett Kavanaugh denies it. Number two is a woman who says, while at Yale with Brett Kavanaugh in a circle, he may have exposed himself in a drunken stupor in a drinking game. She's not sure it was Brett Kavanaugh. She didn't see it was Brett Kavanaugh. She heard somebody else say it was Brett Kavanaugh. Nobody else at the party confirms that account. Not one person. Number three is the Avenatti witness, mm -hmm. the one who's been teased by Avenatti on Twitter all week as the bombshell witness who decides not to say anything publicly until the eve before his confirmation here, until the eve before the Blasey vote uh, testimony today. And that woman is talking about a gang rape party circuit. Epidemic. At, back in, the in 1981, and she doesn't accuse Brett Kavanaugh of ever having laid a finger on her, or Mark Judge for that matter. Number four is an anonymous person whose account comes from the mother of another person, all of whom are anonymous. The mother of one woman says her daughter's friend was allegedly pushed against a wall by a young Brett Kavanaugh in 1998. None of the actual participants of that event have come forward to actually say it happened. We don't have any identities or know anything about, uh, uh, about biases or so right. on. There was a fifth woman who came forward who has already now recanted, recanted saying, no, I I'm made I'm it I'm up. So, my, so let's be clear on what I the facts are. My, my larger point is... <laughs> We should. Yeah. I don't think anybody's disputed. I mean, that's the point. We should be clear on what but the facts are. But to say four allegations of sexual assault is, that's how somebody so let's gets say, unfairly let, maligned. So, okay, so ju just in Dr. Ford's case, which is the case that we're dealing with today, again, I just think it is why the American people are so turned off to what happens in our nation's capital, because... The, the Republicans and the Democrats cannot even agree on how to investigate an alleged sexual yes. assault. Right. And because I, and they're, I think because they're right. motivated by politics, as right. you know. That's right? all it is. And, and I, think that's fair, but I think that's fair, but we also have to consider that a lot of people are just simply undecided, that they will be watching today to make their own assessment. And I want to reflect back to Anita Hill and her testimony, that after her testimony, actually more people didn't believe her story with CBS. I have the numbers here. Before, 47% did not believe Anita Hill going in. After, 54% did not believe Anita Hill going in. Can I put so, a... So, but in, 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 in her defense, it. she was she had an entire group and of senators, Dems certainly. and Republicans, right. against her. So it was, it, was, it was a different dynamic and a different time, but a lot of people, they're taking Judge Judy's advice, and they're waiting to see and, and make to up the, their own mind. To, yeah. to your point, I think as people watch this, and, and to your point, Megan, about the, the, what the allegations are and that the notion that they may be fabricated, which is what a lot of people are saying, look at what this has done to Dr. Ford's life. Mm -hmm. No one would ever want to come out and have their life destroyed like this if they were just simply making it up, unless there's an incredibly strong motive to do so. And so it's not I, that no people make it I up. I understand that but, fully. But think about that but when people do, watch her. people do lie. I'm, and I'm not saying Dr. Ford people is doing lie, that at all. People lie, but rarely in the public glare. Now, like, well, well, I, I, that's not Rolling true at Stone all. Story. Rolling Stone I mean, in UVA was, and down at the Duke University. Like and this fifth accuser do. who came out and, and has already said, I way, never mind, forget it, I'm out. That was a man who said he beat up another guy and then saw a photo no, this guy so said that, there, that Brett Kavanaugh raped somebody on a boat in, in Rhode, Rhode Island, Island right. which but, was a lie. Right, but the way, I mean, yes, the way he, so he I'm just saying people do it. come forward, Dan, to say things that aren't true. You can't... I agree. Just I'm not because saying they somebody don't, but, go, puts themselves through, through the ringer does not mean that they are necessarily a truth teller. It doesn't mean they're not either. I, right. I understand your point. But that, I'm just drawing the point that, that you really need to have a tremendous motive to fabricate yes. if you're Dr. Ford and you're going before millions and millions of people today to lie about some fabricated... I was, yeah, I, I don't think that this should be a test, as we've heard from many people, a test of female solidarity. I think it should be a search for the truth and to try to have a reasonable conversation, questioning today, to learn as much as we can, and then the senators will advise and consent on whether or not this nominee should move and forward. And can I say, I don't even know if it will be a search for truth because I don't think we can know that, right? It's been 36 years. It's the reason we have statutes of limitations in, these, in this country is because the defendant can't possibly defend a charge from 36 years ago without contemporaneous physical evidence or proof or witnesses or anything. You know, like if, if, if she came to him the week after, he could have said, I wasn't at that party. I was in another state, I, whatever his defense would have been. And so I don't know if truth is attainable, but I do think the Senate has a duty Dignity to advise is. and content, consent. Dignity that's their duty. Attainable. To advise, that, well, that means, right. So that's their duty to advise and consent. And they need to get enough information out of these witnesses that they feel comfortable making that recommendation, saying, I'm going to give them a thumbs up or I'm going to give them a thumbs down. And for better or for worse, that's the process. Once they reach that conclusion, I, 
I believe her a little bit more. I believe him a little bit more. They can vote, and that's what's going to happen and on Friday. And then you can call your senators and put pressure on them about which way you want them to vote, because they represent you. And then they're probably going to blow you off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hans. <laughs> <It's> uplifting. <laughs> they're going to listen to their wealthy donors, so unless you're one of them, don't bother.